Pep Guardiola expressed his deep admiration for Cruyff's influence on football, emphasizing that there are no equals to him in players or coaches. Is Johan Cruyff your ultimate idol, Pep? Your reverence for him seems akin to devotion. While adopting his football philosophy has led to numerous successes, Pep, remember not everyone embraces your style. There are adversaries challenging your approach. In the Catalan village of San Peter, amidst the serene backdrop of St. Francis Church, emerged a football prodigy named Josep Guardiola Sala. Born to a Laboa father and a homemaker, Guardiola's upbringing was humble. Despite not hailing from a footballing lineage, he fostered an inseparable bond with the ball from a tender age. Young Pep would rush out to nearby fields to indulge in his passion for football, finding solace and joy in the sport. Witnessing his son's delight, his father often sacrificed to gift him new balls at Christmas. Receiving a new ball filled Pep with immense joy, prompting him to proudly display it to his friends wherever he went. While Pep cherished playing football since childhood, the notion of becoming a professional player didn't initially cross his mind. His father, burdened with toil, could seldom accompany or encourage him. One remarkable day, Pep and his friends seized the opportunity to serve as ball boys at Camp Nou Stadium, an exhilarating experience for suburban kids invited to the grandeur of Barcelona's iconic arena. With his parents' blessing, Pep relished his role as a ball boy, cherishing every encounter with the ball, which he regarded as his lifelong companion. During Terry Venable's tenure as Barcelona coach, 14-year-old Pep served as a ball boy, captured on camera applauding alongside Venables during a victorious Champions Cup semi-final in 1986. Following a year in this role, Pep and his friends received a coveted invitation to join Barcelona's youth academy, a moment that filled Pep with excitement as he promptly shared the news with his parents. Transitioning from spectator to participant, Pep eagerly embraced training at the academy, where his football skills began to take shape, pondering ways to master the intricacies of the game. Pep's enrollment in Barcelona's academy marked a pivotal juncture in his life, where he encountered the principles of Johan Cruyff. Surprisingly, before his admiration for Cruyff blossomed, Pep adorned his bedroom walls with posters of Michel Platini, a childhood idol. Although Pep cherished Platini, his attempt to secure an autograph from his idol as a ball boy ended in rejection, a moment that disillusioned him. However, his encounter with Cruyff in 1988 redirected his allegiance, igniting Pep's fervent admiration for the Dutch maestro. Their initial meeting left Pep captivated by Cruyff's passion and wisdom, as he imparted invaluable advice on understanding the essence of football. Cruyff's revolutionary ideas permeated Pep's consciousness, shaping his development as a footballer. Under Cruyff's mentorship, Pep's performance flourished within the academy, earning continued guidance and scrutiny from the iconic figure. The culmination of Pep's journey came on a momentous day at Camp Nou in 1990, as he made his debut for Barcelona's senior squad, donning the number four jersey and gracing the pitch as a starting midfielder in a La Liga clash against Codis, an unforgettable occasion for both Pep and the Catalan faithful. Season after season, Cruyff and Pep formed an indelible bond within Barcelona's dream team during the early 90s, with Guardiola emerging as the linchpin of the Blagrana midfield, orchestrating numerous triumphs, including Barcelona's inaugural Champions League victory in 1992. For over a decade, Pep's dedication to Barcelona as a player propelled him to global footballing prominence. Yet, amidst his unwavering commitment, there arose a discordant note in his final chapter. One April afternoon in 2001, Pep convened with then Barca president Jem Gaspard, disclosing his decision to depart. Desiring a dignified farewell, Pep envisioned a press conference alongside President Gaspard. However, Gaspard's absence, citing prior vacation plans, shattered those hopes, leaving Pep to bid adieu through the impersonal medium of the media. Pep's departure from Barca, lacking the reverence befitting his contributions, marked an unsettling moment in his illustrious career staining the legacy he had painstakingly crafted. This incident marred Pep's footballing journey, prompting him to turn a new leaf in the heartland of pizza, Italy. Brescia, a Serie A outfit, beckoned Pep, drawn by the prospect of regular playing time crucial for his aspirations to represent Spain in the 2002 World Cup. The allure of playing alongside Roberto Boggio and the allure of Lombardis culture swayed Pep's decision. However, Pep's Italian sojourn was fraught with adversity. Shortly after his arrival, he found himself embroiled in a doping controversy, testing positive for Nandrolone. 
Despite vehemently professing innocence, Pep incurred a four-month ban, tarnishing his reputation further. Following his underwhelming exit from Barcelona, this setback cast a shadow over Pep's career, leaving his Catalan parents incredulous at their son's entanglement in a foreign doping scandal. The setbacks in Italy didn't deter Pep from his affection for life in the land of the Tower of Pisa, if anything, it deepened his bond, especially upon joining AS Roma under the welcoming gaze of President Franco Sensi. However, the tune differed when it came to Roma's coach at the time, Fabio Capello. To Capello, Pep was an unwanted addition, a misfit in the tactical scheme he envisioned for Roma. It was a cold reception, with Capello relegating Pep to the sidelines, a move that stung Pep deeply. He even quipped that the Olimpico bench offered better comfort than the playing field. These Italian trials prompted Pep to pack his bags in 2003, following the footsteps of Gabriel Battistuta to the Qatar League, signing up with Oali SC. In Qatar, Pep found solace, along with recognition and a respectable paycheck, dedicating himself to Al Ali for two fruitful years. Yet, amidst this, the unique opportunity emerged. During his time in Qatar, Pep dabbled in trials with Manchester City, even training under Stuart Pearce. However, City's offer of merely a six-month contract left Pep conflicted. In a notable reversal, Pep, prioritizing stability for his family, opted for a hiatus from the uncertainties of football. Retirement wasn't on his agenda, football remained his passion. During this sabbatical in 2005, Pep contemplated a new path, coaching. Recalling his encounter with Juan Melillo during his Barcelona days, Pep recognized Lillo's profound coaching acumen, sparking his interest in delving into the realm of coaching. Pep's eagerness to reunite with Lillo led him to Mexico, where fate had placed Lillo as the head coach of Dorado Sinaloa. Despite the club's lowly status in the Mexican third division, Pep saw an invaluable opportunity to glean knowledge directly from Lillo, even if it meant risking his esteemed player status. For Pep, the allure of learning from Lillo surpassed any concerns about tarnishing his playing career. He hungered for Lillo's guidance, aspiring to absorb the essence of coaching excellence. Navigating the challenges of being a 35-year-old footballer proved taxing. After a brief stint in Mexico, Pep contemplated bidding farewell to his playing days. In July 2006, Pep hung up his boots, yearning to return to Catalonia to reunite with his family. Before departing Mexico, he expressed heartfelt gratitude to Lillo for his mentorship. Back in Catalonia, Pep's encounter with Barcelona president Joan Laporta took an unexpected turn. Laporta not only commended Pep on his playing career but also extended an offer for him to coach Barcelona B. Initially taken aback, Pep hesitated, doubting his coaching abilities. However, driven by his unwavering devotion to the club, he ultimately accepted the challenge. In 2007, Pep embarked on his coaching journey with Barcelona B, competing in the fourth tier of La Liga. His inaugural message to the team, articulated by former player Marc Valiente, emphasized a swift rise from relegation, reflecting Pep's determination to uphold Barcelona's standards. Under Pep's tutelage, Barcelona B enjoyed early success, winning seven out of their first ten games. Beyond results, Pep's coaching philosophy, emphasizing possession-based attacks, garnered attention from the club's management. Additionally, he continued to receive guidance from afar, with Johan Cruyff remotely monitoring his coaching endeavors. A year elapsed, and senior Barcelona found themselves amidst less-than-ideal circumstances. Frank Rigid's tenure hung in the balance, exacerbated by a string of disappointing results in the 2007-2008 season. In response, the Barca board swiftly convened to consider Rigid's successor. Despite the majority's inclination towards Jose Mourinho for his reputed ability to deliver immediate results, Johan Cruyff, present at the meeting, intervened. Cruyff, drawing from his observations of Pep Guardiola's progress at Barca B, passionately advocated for his protégé's promotion. He asserted that Pep was more than capable of seamlessly continuing Rigid's legacy. Cruyff went as far as lobbying Laporta, the ultimate authority on the coach's appointment. Ultimately, Laporta acceded to Cruyff's persuasion, appointing Pep Guardiola as Barcelona's new head coach in 2008, succeeding Rigid. Initially taken aback, Pep felt a surge of excitement tempered by self-doubt upon learning of his appointment. However, knowing Cruyff's endorsement buoyed his confidence, prompting him to embrace the daunting challenge ahead. 
the hopes of the Catalan faithful now rested upon Pep's shoulders. Yet, amidst the optimism, Pep's early pronouncement stirred controversy. His decision to exclude Ronaldinho from his plan sent shockwaves through the Barca faithful, challenging the status quo. While Pep harbored no animosity towards Ronaldinho, he deemed the superstar's lifestyle detrimental to the team's harmony. Following a candid conversation, Ronaldinho gracefully accepted Pep's decision, opting for a peaceful departure to AC Milan. Similarly, Yaya Toure found himself sidelined as Pep entrusted a young, inexperienced Sergio Busquets with pivotal midfield responsibilities. Though initially surprised, Toure accepted the decision, recognizing Pep's strategic vision for the team's evolution. But ultimately, it was through subtle maneuvers that Pep phased out the Ivory Coast midfielder. His preference for Busquets over Toure became increasingly apparent, leading Toure to feel marginalized and ultimately prompting his decision to depart. Reflecting on his time at Barcelona, Toure lamented, Pep kind of ignored me. He rarely spoke to me for almost a season. Indeed, Pep's debut season was fraught with risk, his stringent policies leaving little room for error. However, Cruyff's unwavering belief in Pep's abilities proved prescient as Pep demonstrated his prowess as one of the world's preeminent coaches. The year 2009 marked a pinnacle in Pep's career. The unprecedented achievement of the sextuple surpassed all expectations with Barcelona's second Champions League triumph, notably on Roman soil, where Pep had faced adversity as a player under Capello's regime. However, by 2010, opposition to Pep's dominance began to emerge, epitomized by the arrival of his antagonist, Jose Mourinho, then coaching Inter Milan. Mourinho's defensive tactics, famously encapsulated by parking the bus, frustrated Pep in the 2010 Champions League semi-final. Mourinho's jubilant celebration, including a provocative gesture, further stoked tensions, earning disdain from Pep and Barca players alike. The resistance to Pep's style of football persisted beyond Mourinho. In his final season at Barcelona, Pep encountered another adversary in Roberto Di Matteo, then Chelsea's coach in 2012. Di Matteo's tactical mastery, particularly evident in the second leg of the 2012 Champions League semi-final, shattered Pep's dream of securing Barcelona's fourth Champions League title. The resolute defence orchestrated by Di Matteo silenced Camp Nou, casting a shadow over Pep's farewell season at the club. Leaving Camp Nou amidst a period where his footballing philosophy seemed vulnerable, Pep departed after four illustrious years, leaving behind cherished memories but also seeking respite. Struggling to reconcile with his renowned, tiki-taka, style, Pep declared it dead, distancing himself from its association, even as he grappled with his coaching identity. In 2013, emerging from his hiatus, Pep yearned for a fresh challenge. Offers poured in, including one from German powerhouse Bayern Munich. Coaching in Germany presented an enticing prospect for Pep, a chance to test the adaptability of his footballing ethos in new terrain. With unwavering determination, Pep embarked on the project with Di Roten, eager to validate his approach in the heart of Europe. Under Pep's stewardship, Bayern underwent a transformation, embracing a style characterized by possession, short passes, and relentless tempo. This departure from their previous emphasis on results-driven football heralded a new era of dominance for the Bavarian giants, evidenced by their Bundesliga hat-trick. Key figures like Lahm, Schweinsteiger and Müller seamlessly assimilated Pep's footballing principles, their influence extending to the German national team, culminating in their triumph at the 2014 World Cup. However, subsequent setbacks for Germany after 2014 led to scrutiny of Pep's footballing doctrine, with critics attributing the decline to its alleged erosion of traditional German values, including fighting spirit and physicality. Pep found himself at the center of the debate, criticized for his perceived failure to secure the coveted Champions League title with Bayern, despite domestic dominance. In the eyes of some, Pep's tenure in Germany was marred not only by his team's European shortcomings but also by broader accusations of diluting the essence of German football. Nestled within a club supported by affluent owners and understanding allies, Pep finds a sense of belonging. His tenure at City has showcased remarkable resilience, spanning an impressive eight years, marking his lengthiest coaching stint at a single club. Amassing titles and shattering records, Pep's reign at the Citizens culminated in the crowning achievement of the Champions League title, dispelling any lingering doubts of a supposed curse haunting his career. 
Manchester City has provided Pep with an environment of comfort and success at the Etihad Stadium. Yet, amidst the triumphs, shadows loom in the form of ongoing troubles. The spectre of financial impropriety casts a pall over City, facing accusations of 115 financial offences, eliciting ire from rival clubs clamouring for financial transparency and justice. Pep, burdened by a sense of responsibility, confronts the turmoil head-on. Despite facing resistance from ownership, he refuses to compromise on matters of integrity, even entertaining the prospect of departure should the issue persist. Beyond his footballing prowess lies a man grappling with the complexities of human frailty. While his passion for the beautiful game has fueled his phenomenal journey, he remains grounded by the wisdom imparted by Johan Cruyff, that even the most illustrious careers are finite, mere entries in life's ledger.